Sutra of the Past Vows of Earth Store Bodhisattva. Spiritual penetrations in the palace of the Jagatimsha Heaven, Chapter One. Thus I have heard. At one time, the Buddha was in the Jagatimsha Heaven, speaking drama for his mother. At that time, uncountably many Buddhas and great Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas from infinite worlds in the ten directions assembled. To praise how Shakyamuni Buddha is able to manifest powerfully great wisdom and spiritual penetrations in the evil world of the five turbidities, they lauded how he regulates and subdues the obstinate beings so that they can learn what causes suffering and what brings bliss. Each one sent his attendants to pay their respects to the world honored one. At that time. The first common smite and emitted billions of great light clouds. There was the light cloud of great fulfillment, the light cloud of great compassion, the light cloud of great wisdom, the light cloud of great prana, the light cloud of great samadhi, the light cloud of great auspiciousness, the light cloud of great blessings, the light cloud of great merit. The light cloud, a great refuge, the light cloud, a great praise. After emitting indescribably many light clouds, he also uttered many wonderful subtle sounds. There was the sound of Dana Paramita, the sound of Shila Paramita, the sound of Shanti Paramita, the sound of Virya Paramita, the sound of Dhyana Paramita. And the sounds of prana paramita. There was a sound of compassion, the sound of joyous giving, the sound of liberation, the sound of no outflows, the sound of wisdom, the sound of great wisdom, the sound of the lion's roar, the sound of the great lion's roar, the sound of thunder clouds, and the sound of great thunder clouds. After he had uttered indescribably many sounds, countless millions of gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits from the Saha world and other worlds also gathered in the palace of the Jagatimsha Heaven. They came from the heaven of the four kings, the Jagatimsha Heaven, the Suyama Heaven, the Tushita Heaven, the Blissful Transformations Heaven. And the heaven of comfort gained through others' transformations. They came from the heaven of the multitudes of Brahma, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, the heaven of the great Brahma Lord, the heaven of blessed light, the heaven of limitless light, the heaven of light sound, the heaven of lesser purity, the heaven of limitless purity. And the heaven of universal purity. They came from the birth of blessings heaven, the love of blessings heaven, the abundant fruit heaven, the no thought heaven, the no affliction heaven, the no heat heaven, the good views heaven, the good manifestation heaven, the ultimate form heaven, the Maheshvara heaven. And so forth up to the heaven of the station of neither thought nor non-thought. All those groups of gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits came and gathered together. Moreover, sea spirits, river spirits, stream spirits, tree spirits, mountain spirits, earth spirits, brook and marsh spirits, sprout and seedling spirits. Day, night, and space spirits, heaven spirits, food and drink spirits, grass and wood spirits, and other such spirits from the Saha and other worlds came and gathered together. In addition, all the great gods, kings from the Saha and other worlds came and gathered together. There were the gods, king evil eyes, the gods, king blood drinker. The Ghost King Essence and Energy Eater, the Ghost King Fetus and Egg Eater, 
the ghost king spreader of sickness, the ghost king collector of poisons, the ghost king kite-hearted, the ghost king blessings and benefit, the ghost king great regard and respect in others. At that time, Shakyamuni Buddha said to the Dharma Prince Manju Sri Bodhisattva Mahasattva, As you regard these Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, ghosts, dragons, ghosts and spirits from this land and other lands who are now gathered in the Chajashimsha heaven, do you know how many of them there are? Manju Sri said to the Buddha, World honored one, even if I were to measure and reckon with my spiritual powers for a thousand ends, I still would not be able to know how many of them there are. The Buddha told Manju Sri, regarding them with my Buddha eye, their numbers cannot be exhausted. Those beings have been taken across, are uh, being taken across, will be taken across, have been brought to accomplishment, are uh, being brought to accomplishment, and will be brought to accomplishment by Earth, Earth Star Bodhisattva, Shiti Gapa, throughout many ends. Manju Sri said to the Buddha, World Honored One, Throughout many ends, I have cultivated good rules, and my wisdom has been certified as unobstructed. When I hear what the Buddha says, I immediately accept it with faith. But hearers of small attainment, gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division, and beings in the future who hear the first common's true and sincere words, will certainly harbor doubts. Even if they receive the teaching most respectfully, they will still be able, be unable to avoid slandering it. My only wish is that the world honored one will proclaim for everyone what Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva practiced and what vows he made while on the level of planting causes that now enable him to succeed in doing such inconceivable deeds. The Buddha said to Manju Sri, By way of analogy, suppose that each blade of grass, tree, forest, rice plant, hemp stalk, bamboo, reed, mountain, rock, and dust moat in the 3,000 great thousand world system was the Ganges River. Then suppose that each grain of sand in each of those Ganges rivers so was a wound, and that each dust mode in each of those wounds was an end. Then suppose that each dust mode accumulated in each of those ends was itself an end. The time elapsed since the Earth Storm Bodhisattva was certified, so the position of the tenth ground is a thousand times longer than that in the above analogy. Even longer was the time that he dwelt on the levels of Hira and Pratyaka Buddha, Manju Sri, the awesome spiritual strength and vows of this Bodhisattva are inconceivable. If a good men or women of the future hear this Bodhisattva's name, praise him, behold and bow to him, call his name, make offerings to him, or if they draw, carve, cast, sculpt, or make lacquered images of him, such people will be reborn in the heaven of the 33 100 times and will never fall into the evil paths. Manju Sri, in this way, many aeons ago, during the time of a Buddha named Lion Sprint Complete in the 10,000 practice, thus come one. A straw Bodhisattva Mahasattva was the son of great elder. That elder's son, upon observing the Buddha's hallmarks and fine features and how the thousand blessings adorned him, he asked that Buddha what practices and vows made him so magnificent. 
Lion's Sprint complete in the 10,000 practices thus come one that said to the eldest son, If you wish to have a body like mine, you must first spend a long time liberating beings who are undergoing suffering. Manjushri, that command caused the eldest son to make a vow. From now until the end of future time, throughout uncountable ends, I will use expansive expedient means to help beings in the six paths who are suffering for their offenses. Only when they have all been liberated will I myself become a Buddha. From the time he made that great vow in the presence of that Buddha until now, hundreds of thousands of Nayutas of inexpressibly many ends have passed. Yet, he still is a Bodhisattva. Another time, inconceivable as Samkhya ends ago, there was a Buddha named Enlightenment Flower Samadhi Self Mastery King First Come One. That Buddha's lifespan was the 400 billion as Samkhya ends. During his Dharma image age, there lived a Brahman woman endowed with ample blessings from previous lives who was respected by everyone. Whether she was walking, standing, sitting, or lying down, God surrounded and protected her. Her mother, however, embraced a different faith and often slighted the triple jewel. The worthy daughter made use of many experiences in trying to convince her mother to hold the right views, but her mother never totally believed. Before long, the mother's life ended and her consciousness fell into the relentless hell. When her mother's life ended, the Brahman woman, knowing that her mother had not believed in cause and effect while alive, feared that her karma would certainly pull her so into the evil paths. For that reason, she sold the family house and acquired many kinds of incense, flowers, and other gifts. With those, she performed a great offering in that Buddha's stupas and monasteries. She saw an especially fine image of the first common enlightenment flower Samadhi Self Mastery King in one of the monasteries. As the Brahman woman beheld the honored countenance, she became doubly respectful while thinking to herself. Buddhas are called greatly enlightened ones who have attained all wisdom. If this Buddha were in the world, I could ask him where my mother went after she died, he will certainly know. The Brahman woman went wept for a long time as he gazed longingly upon the first come one. Suddenly, a voice in the air said, O oh, weeping worthy woman, do not be so sorrowful. I shall now show you where your mother has gone. The Brahman woman placed her palms together as she addressed the space, saying, Which virtuous divinity is comforting me in my grief? Ever since the day I lost my mother, I have held her in memory day and night, but there is nowhere I can go to ask about the realm of her rebirth. The voice in the air spoke to the woman again. I am the one whom you behold and worship, the former enlightenment flower Samadhi Self Mastery King First Come One. Because I have seen that your regard for your mother is double that of ordinary beings, I have come to show you where she is. The Brahman woman suddenly launched toward the voice she was hearing and then fell, injuring herself severely. Those around her supported and attended to her, and after a long time, she was revived. Then she addressed the air, saying, 
I hope the Buddha will be compassionate and quickly tell me into what realm my mother has been reborn. I am now near death myself. Enlightenment Flower Samadhi Self Master King First Come One told the worthy woman, After you make your offerings, return home quickly, sit upright, and concentrate on my name. You will soon know where your mother has been reborn. The Brahma woman bowed to the Buddha and returned home. The memory of her mother sustained her and she sat upright, recollecting enlightenment flower samadhi self mastery king first come one. After doing so for a day and night, she suddenly saw herself beside a sea whose waters seethed and bubbled. Many evil beasts with iron bodies flew swiftly back and forth above the sea. She saw billions of men and women bobbing up and down in the sea, being fought over, sad, and eaten by the evil beasts. She saw yakshas with different shapes. Some had many hands, some many eyes, some many legs, so many heads, with their sharp fangs, they drove the offenders on toward the evil beasts. Or, the the yakshas themselves set the offenders and twisted their heads and feet together into shapes so horrible that no one would dare even look at them for long. During that time, the Brahma woman was naturally without fear due to the power of recollecting the Buddha. A ghost king named Poisonless bowed his head in greeting and said to the worthy woman, Welcome, O Bodhisattva. What conditions bring you here? The Brahman woman asked the ghost king, What is this place? Poisonless replied, We are on the western side of the great iron ring mountain and this is the first of the seas that encircle it, the worthy woman said. I have heard that the hells are within the iron ring. Is that actually so? Poisonless answered, Yes, the hells are here. The worthy woman asked, How have I now come to the hells? Poisonless answered, if it was an awesome spiritual strength that brought you here, then it was the power of karma. Those are the only two ways that anyone gets here. The worthy woman asked, Why is this the water seething and bubbling? And why are there so many offenders and evil beasts? Poisonless replied, These are beings of Jambuvipa who did evil deeds. They have just died and passed through 49 days without any surviving relatives doing any meritorious deeds on their behalf to rescue them from their distress. Besides that, during their lives, they themselves didn't find any good causes. Now, their own karma calls forth this house. Their first task is to cross this sea. 10,000 Yoranasi east of this sea is another sea in which they will undergo twice as much suffering. East of that sea is yet another sea where the sufferings are doubled yet again. What the combined evil causes the three karmic vehicles evoke is called the Sea of Karma, that is, it is that place. The worthy woman asked the ghost king Poisonless, Where are the hells? Poisonless answered, Within the three seas are hundreds of thousands of hells, each one different. Eighteen of those are known as the great hells. Five hundred subsequent ones inflict limitless cruel sufferings. Following those are hundreds of thousands that inflict limitless suffering the meatless further sufferings. The worthy woman again questioned the great ghost king. My mother died recently, and I do not know where he has gone. 
the gods king asked the worthy woman, "When the Bodhisattva's mother was alive, what habits did she have?" The worthy woman replied, "My mother held heaven views and ridiculed and slandered the triple jewel. Even if she occasionally believed, she would soon become disrespectful again." She died recently, and I still do not know where she was reborn. Poisonous asked, "What was the Buddha, the Bodhisattva's mother's name and clan?" The worthy woman replied, "My parents were both Brahmins. My father's name was Shila Sudarshana. My mother's name was Yue Di Li." Poisonous placed his palms together. And implored the worthy woman, "Please, worthy one, quickly return home. There is no need for you to grieve further. The offender Yue Di Li was born in the heavens three days ago. It is said that she received the benefit of offerings made and blessings cultivated by her fellow tribe who practiced giving to enlightenment flower somebody self mastery king first come one as dupas and monasteries. Not only was the bodhisattva's mother released from the house, but all the other offenders who were destined for the relentless hell also received bliss. And were reborn with her. Having finished speaking, the ghost king put his palms together and withdrew. The Brahma woman returned swiftly, as if from a dream, understood what had happened, and then made a profound and far-reaching vow before the stupas and images of enlightenment, flower samadhi, self-mastery, king first come one, saying, "I vow that." Until the end of future ends, I will respond to beings suffering for their offenses by using many expedient devices to bring about their liberation. The Buddha told Manjushri, "The Ghost King Poisonless is the present Bodhisattva for most wealth. The Brahma woman is now Earth Star Bodhisattva." The division bodies gather. Chapter two. At that time, the division bodies of Earth Star Bodhisattva began gathering in the palace of the Chajachim Shahaven from billions of inexpressible, inconceivable, immeasurable, ineffable, limitless asankhyas of worlds. They came from wherever hells are found. Due to the spiritual powers of the first come one. Each came from his own direction and was joined by thousands of billions of nayutas of those who had obtained liberation from the path of karma. All brought incense and flowers as offerings to the Buddha. Those groups who came were irreversible from Anuttara Samya Sambodhi because they had been touched and transformed by Earth Star Bodhisattva. For long ends, they had wandered in birth and death, undergoing suffering within the six paths, without even temporary respite. Now they had reached various levels of sagehood due to the great compassion and deep vows of Earth Star Bodhisattva. They felt joyful as they arrived at the Chajashim Sha Heaven and gazed at the first come one. Their eyes not leaving him for a moment. At that time, the world on at once stretched forth his golden-colored arm and wrapped the crowds of all the division bodies of Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva gathered from billions of inexpressible. Inconceivable, immeasurable, ineffable, limitless asamkhyas of worlds, and said, "I teach and transform obstinate beings such as these within the evil worlds of the five turbidities, causing their minds to be regulated and subdued so that they renounce the deviant and return to the proper. But one or two out of ten still cling to their bad habits. For them." 
I again divide into thousands of billions of bodies and use numerous additional expedient means. Those with keen rules will listen and immediately believe. Those with good rewards will respond to exhortation and strive to succeed. Those who are dim and dull will only return after being tortured for a long time. Those whose karma is heavy will fail to show any respect. My division bodies take across and liberate all those different kinds of beings. I may appear in a male body, I may appear in a female body, I may appear in the body of a god or dragon, I may appear in the body of a spirit or ghost. I may appear as a mountain, a forest, a stream, a spring, a river, a lake, a fountain, or a well, in order to benefit people. I use all these ways to save beings. I may appear in the body of God Chakra. I may appear in the body of Lord Brahma. I may appear in the body of a well-turning king. I may appear in the body of a lay person. I may appear in the body of a national leader. I may appear in the body of a prime minister. I may appear in the body of an official. I may appear in the body of a bhikshu, a bhikshuni, a nupasaka, a nupasika, and so forth, up to the body of a hearer, an heart a Pratika Buddha or a Bodhisattva in order to teach and rescue beings. It is not that I appear to them only in the body of a Buddha. Reflect on how I have toyed for repeated errands and endured acute suffering to take a cross and free stubborn beings who resist being tortured and continue to suffer for their offenses. Those not yet subdued undergo retributions according to their karma. If they fall into the evil destinies and are enduring tremendous suffering, then you should remember the gravity of this entrustment I am now making to you here in the palace of the Chajashimsha heaven. Five ways to liberate to liberate all beings in the Saha world from now until the time when my May Chaya comes into the world, help them escape suffering forever, encounter Buddhas, and receive predictions. At that time, all the division bodies of Earth Star Bodhisattva that came from all those worlds merged into a single form. Then he wept and said to the Buddha, Throughout the long ends, I have been receiving the Buddha's guidance, and from that, have developed inconceivable spiritual power and great wisdom. My division bodies fill walls as many as grains of sand in millions of billions of Ganges rivers. In each of those walls, I transform myself into millions of billions of bodies. Each body rescues millions of billions of people, helping them to return respectfully to the triple jewel, escape birth and death forever, and reach the bliss of Nirvana. Even if the good deeds within the Buddha Dharma amount to as little as a strand of hair, a drop of water, a grain of sand, a mold of dust, or the tip of a hair, I will gradually take them across, liberate them, and help them gain great benefit. I only hope that the world honored one will not be worried about beings of the future who have bad karma. In that way, he addressed the Buddha three times. I only hope that the world honored one will not be worried about beings of the future who have bad karma. At that time, the Buddha praised Earth Straw Bodhisattva and said, Excellent, excellent. I will help you in this work you so willing, uh, willingly undertake. When the vast vows that you keep making throughout so many ends are fulfilled and all those beings have been saved, then you will be certified as having attained Bodhi. 
contemplating the karmic conditions of beings, chapter 3. At that time, the Buddha's mother, Lady Maya, placed her palms together respectfully and asked the Earth Star Bodhisattva, Great Sage, could you tell us about the different kinds of karma that beings of Jambu Vipa create and the resulting retributions that they undergo? Earth Star replied, There are millions of worlds and lands that may or may not have a women, may or may not have house, may or may not have the Buddha drama, and so forth, up to having or not having heroes and Pratyaka Buddhas. Since the worlds differ, the retributions in the house also differ. Lady Maya spoke again to the Bodhisattva. Could you please tell us about the offenses committed by those in Jambu Vipa that result in retributions in the evil destinies? A star replied, Worthy mother, please listen as I speak briefly about that. The Buddha's mother answered, Great sage, please do tell us about it. Then Earth Star Bodhisattva said to the worthy mother, Retributions that result from offenses committed in Jambu Vipa are described like this. Beings who are not filial to their parents, even to the point of harming or killing them, will fall into the relentless hell where for thousands of billions of ants they will seek escape in vain. Beings who shed the Buddha's blood, slander the triple jewel, and do not venerate sutras, will fall into the relentless hell where for thousands of billions of ants they will seek escape in vain. Beings who assert or damage the prop property of the eternally dwelling, who defy bhikshus or bhikshunis, who commit sexual acts within the Sangha Rama, or who kill or harm beings there, will fall into the relentless hell where for thousands of billions of ants they will seek escape in vain. Beings who seem to be shramanas but in their minds are not shramanas, who destroy the things of the eternally dwelling, who deceive lay people, who go against the precepts and who commit many other evil deeds, will fall into the relentless hell, where for thousands of billions of ants they will seek escape in vain. Beings who steal the wealth and property of the eternally dwelling, including eating grains, food and drink, and clothing, or who take anything at all that was not given to them, that was not given to them, will fall into the relentless hell, where for thousands of billions of ants, they will seek escape in vain. Earth Star continued, Worthy Mother, beings who commit such offenses will fall into the fivefold relentless how where they will constantly seek temporary relief from their suffering but will never receive even a moment's relief. Lady Maya further asked Earth Star Bodhisattva, why is that hell called relentless? Earth Star replied, Worthy Mother, all the hells are within the Great Iron Ring Mountain, the 18 Great House and the 500 subsequent ones each have their own names. The hundreds of thousands more that also have their own names. The relentless hell is found within a city of hells that encompasses more than 80,000 square miles. The city is made entirely of iron. An unbroken mass of fire extends for 10,000 miles above the city. Within the city are many interconnected hells, each with a different name. There is just one hell called Relentless. Its circumference is 18,000 miles. The wall of that hell is a thousand miles high, totally made of iron, and covered with a fire burning downward that is met by a fire burning upward. Iron snakes and dogs spewing fire rays back and forth, 
along the top of that wall. In that hill, there is a bed that extends for 10,000 miles. One person undergoing punishment sees his or her body covering the entire bed. When hundreds of thousands of people undergo punishment simultaneously, each still sees his or her own body covering the bed. That is how retributions are undergone by those with the same karma. What is more, these offenders undergo extreme suffering. Hundreds of thousands of yakshas and other evil ghosts display fangs like swords and eyes like lightning as they pull and drag the offenders with their brass clawed hands. Other yakshas wield huge iron hole birds that they use to pierce the offenders' mouths and noses or stab their bellies and backs. They toss the offenders into the air and then catch them by skewering, skewering them with the harbors or they let them drop onto the bed. Iron eagles peck at the offenders' eyes and iron serpents wrap around their necks. Long nails are driven into all their limbs. Their tongues are pulled out, stretched, and then plowed through. Their internal organs are gouged out, sliced, and mised. Moistened copper is poured into their mouths, and their bodies are bound with hot iron. Responses to their karma go on like that throughout hundreds of thousands of deaths and rebirths. They pass through hundreds of millions of ants seeking escape in vain. When this world is destroyed, they find themselves in another world. When that world is destroyed, they pass on to another one. When that world too is destroyed, they move on to another one. When this world comes into being again, they return here. The situation involving relentless retribution for offenses is like that. Moreover, five comic responses account for the name relentless. What are the five? First, it is said to be relentless because punishment is undergone day and night throughout many ends without ceasing for a moment. Second, it is said to be relentless because one person feels it in the same way that many people feel it. Third, it is said that said to be relentless because repeated punishments continue without cease throughout years that stretch into Nayutas of ends. Those punishments are inflicted by instruments of torture such as the forks and clubs or by eagles, serpents, wolves and dogs and or by pounding, grinding, sawing, drilling, chiseling, cutting, and chopping, or by boiling liquids, iron nets, iron ropes, iron asses, and iron horses, or by rawhide strips bound around one's head, and moisted iron poured over one's body, or by meals of iron pallets and drinks of moistened iron. Fourth, it is said to be relentless because all beings undergo karmic responses based on the offenses that they have committed, whether they be men, women, savages, old, young, honorable, or lowly, whether they be dragons, spirits, gods, or ghosts. Fifth, it is said to be relentless because offenders continually undergo 10,000 deaths and as many rebirths each day and night from the moment they first enter this hell and on through hundreds of thousands of ends. During that time, they seek even a moment's relief, but it never comes. Only when their karma is exhausted can they leave the hell and be born elsewhere. Osto Bodhisattva said to the worthy mother, that is a brief description of the relentless hell. 
if I were to speak extensively about the names of all the implements of punishment in the house and all the sufferings there, I could not finish speaking in an entire hour. After hearing that, Lady Maya placed her palms together, sorrowfully made obeisance and withdrew. Comic Retributions of Beings in Jambudvipa Chapter 4 At that time, a star bodhisattva said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, because I receive the awesome spiritual strength of the Buddha, thirst come one. I am able to divide my body and rescue beings who are undergoing karmic retributions everywhere in millions of worlds. If it were not for the great compassionate strength of the first come one, I would be unable to manifest such changes and transformations. Now the world honored one has entrusted me with rescuing and liberating beings in the six paths until Agita becomes a Buddha. I accept the entrustment, won't honored one, please have no further concern. Then the Buddha told Earth Star Bodhisattva, beings who have not yet obtained liberation have unfixed natures and consciousnesses. Their bad habits bring bad karma, their good habits bring rewards. Reacting to situations by committing good or evil deeds causes them to turn in the five paths without a moment's rest. Throughout aeons as numerous as dust most, they remain confused, deluded, obstructed, and afflicted by difficulties. They are like fish swimming through waters laced with nets. They may sleep through and keep their freedom temporarily, but sooner or later they will be caught. I am concerned about such beings, but since you keep making extensive vows repeatedly throughout successive aeons to take such offenders across, what further worries need I have? After that was said, a Bodhisattva Mahasattva in the assembly named Samadhi Self Mastery King said to the Buddha, World Honored One, what vows has the Earth Star Bodhisattva made during so many successive aeons that now cause him to receive the World Honored One's special praise? I, we hope the World Honored One will tell us about this. Then the World Honored One replied to Samadhi Self Mastery King, Listen attentively, listen attentively and reflect well on the examples uh, I am about to give you. One time, limitless Asamkiyas of Nayutas of inexpressible aeons ago, a Buddha named All Knowledge accomplished thus come one, one worthy of offerings, one of proper and pervasive knowledge, one perfect in clarity and conduct well gone one unsurpassed knight who understands the world, taming and subduing hero, teacher of gods and pupil, Buddha, world honored one, appeared in the world. That Buddha's lifespan was 60,000 years. Before he became a monk, he was the king of a small country and was friendly with the uh, king of a neighboring country. Both kings practiced the ten wholesome deeds and benefited beings. Because the citizens of those two neighboring countries did many bad things, the two kings made a plan using far-reaching expedients. One king vowed to quickly become a Buddha and then rescue absolutely all the other beings. The other king vowed, I do not want to become a Buddha until I first rescue all those who are suffering for their offenses, enabling them to find peace and finally to reach Bodhi. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva Samadhi Self Mastery King. The king who vowed to quickly become a Buddha is all knowledge accomplished first come one. The king who vowed to keep saving beings who are suffering for their offenses, 
rather than become a Buddha is an earth store bodhisattva. Another time, limitless as some here ends ago, a Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes thus come one appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 ends, and his Dharma image age and a heart who had accumulated blessings from rescuing beings met a woman named Bright Eyes who offered a meal to him once while he was teaching and transforming beings. What is your wish? asked the Ahat. Bright Eyes replied, On the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds to rescue her, but I do not know where my mother is now. Sympathizing with her, the Ahat entered Samadhi to contemplate and saw that Bright Eyes mother had fallen into a bad destiny where she was undergoing extreme suffering. The Ahat asked, Bright Eyes, what unwholesome karma did your mother create while alive that makes her now have to undergo such terrible suffering in a bad destiny? Bright Eyes replied, My mother enjoyed eating fish turtles, and other sea creatures. She especially liked to fry or broil fish and turtle eggs. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Oh, Venerable One, please be compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. The heart took pity on Bright Eyes and used his skillful means. He urged Bright Eyes first. With sincere resolve, be mindful of pure lotus eyes first come one and also make carved and painted images of him. When you do so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. Bright Eyes heard that, quickly renounced everything she loved and swiftly commissioned painted images of the Buddha. Then she made offerings before them. The reverence she felt moved her to tears, and she wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream, she saw that Buddha's body, dazzling gold in color and as large as Mount Sumeru, emitting great light. He said to bright eyes, your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as that infant can feel hunger and cold, he will speak. Shortly thereafter, a maid servant in the house bore a son who spoke before he was three days old. Lowering his head and weeping, he said to bright eyes, the karmic conditions we create during our lives and deaths result in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. I am your mother and have been in darkness for a long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great house. Upon receiving the power of your blessings, I have been reborn as a servant's child with a short lifespan. Thirteen years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? When Bright Eyes heard those words, she knew without a doubt that they were her mother's. Choked her with sobs, she said to the servant's child, Since you were my mother, you should know your own past offenses. What unwholesome karma did you create that made you fall into the evil paths? The maidservant's son answered, I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma, killing and slandering. Had I not received the blessings you earned to rescue me from difficulty, I would not yet be released from that karma. Bright Eyes asked, What happens in the house when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? The maidservant's son answered, I can't bear to speak of the ways in which beings suffer 
for their offenses. Even if I were to live for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about. When Bright Eyes heard that, he wept bitterly and spoke into the air, saying, I vow that my mother will be released from the house forever. At the end of these thirteen years, she will be done with her heavy offenses and will not go back to the evil paths. O oh, Buddhas of the Ten Directions, with your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. If my mother never again enters the three evil paths, is never again born into low stations, and will never again be female, then here before the image of pure lotus eyes thus come one, I vow that from this day on, throughout millions of billions of ends, I will respond to all beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses in the hells or the three evil paths of any world. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies of the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. Only after beings with such retributions have all become Buddhas will I myself achieve proper enlightenment. After making that vow, she clearly heard pure lotus eyes thus come and say to her, Bright eyes, your own great compassion and sympathy will reach your mother through he, this mighty vow that you're making. My contemplation shows me that after 13 years, your mother will be done with this retribution and will be born as a Brahman with a lifespan of 100 years. After that retribution, she will be born in the lands of no concern with a lifespan of uncountable ends. Later, she will realize the fruition of Buddhahood and save pupil and gods as numerous as sand grains in the Ganges. Shakyamuni Buddha told Samadhi Self Mastery King, The Arhat whose blessings have bright eyes, then is now inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva. The mother of bright eyes is now liberation Bodhisattva. Bright Eyes herself is now Earth Star Bodhisattva. He has been extending his compassion and sympathy like that from distant ends onward by making vows as many as Ganges sends to rescue vast numbers of beings. Men and women in the future may fail to do good deeds and only do evil, may not believe in cause and effect, may indulge in sexual misconduct and false speech, may use a divisive and harsh speech, and may slander the great Vihargo. Beings with karma like that should certainly fall into bad destinies. But if they encounter good and wise advisors who exhort them and lead them to quickly take refuge with Earth Star Bodhisattva, then those beings will just as quickly be released from their retributions in the three evil paths. If those beings are determined and respectful, if they behold, bow to, and praise the Bodhisattva, and if they make offerings of flowers, incense, clothing, jewels, food, and drink to him, they will enjoy supremely wonderful bliss in the heavens for millions of millions of ends. When their blessings in the heavens end, and they are born as pupil, throughout hundreds of thousands of ends, they will have the potential to be national leaders, able to remember all aspects of causes and effects from previous lives. Oh, Samadhi Self Mastery King, Earth Star Bodhisattva has such inconceivably great awesome spiritual power that he uses expansively for the benefit of beings. All of you Bodhisattvas should remember this sutra and proclaim and spread it far and wide. Samadhi Self Mastery King Bodhisattva said to the Buddha, World Honored One, please do not be concerned. We thousands of billions of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, 
based on the Buddha's awesome spiritual strength. We will certainly proclaim this sutra widely throughout Jambu Vipa for the benefit of beings. Having spoken thus to the world honored one, Samadhi self mastery King Bodhisattva put his palms together, respectfully bowed, and withdrew. At that time, the four heavenly kings arose from their seats, put their palms together respectfully, and said to the Buddha, World honored one, Earth Star Bodhisattva has been making such great vows from distant ends past until now. Why is it that even now he has not yet finished taking beings across? Why does he continue to renew his vast and mighty vows? Please, World Honored One, explain that for us. The Buddha told the four heavenly kings, Excellent, excellent. Now, to benefit you and to extend that benefit to people and gods of the present and future, I will speak about how Earth Star Bodhisattva, out of compassion and pity, uses expedient devices within the paths of birth and death in Jambu Vipa in the Saha world to rescue, take across, and liberate beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses. The four heavenly kings replied, Please, word on one. We would like to hear about this his work. The Buddha told the four heavenly kings, from distant ends passed up to the present, Earth Star Bodhisattva has been rescuing and liberating beings. Since his vows are still not fulfilled, he continues with compassion and sympathy to help beings suffering for their offenses in this world. Moreover, he sees the ceaseless tangle of their causes extending on through infinite future ends. Because of that, he renews his vows. Thus, in this Saha world on the continent of Jambu Vipa, this Bodhisattva teaches and transforms beings by means of millions of billions of expedient devices. Oh, for heavenly kings to kill us, Earth Star Bodhisattva says that short lifespans will be the retribution. To rob us, he says that poverty and acute suffering will be the retribution. To those who indulge in improper sex, he says that rebirth as pigeons or as mandarin drakes or ducks will be the retribution. To those who use harsh speech, he says that quarreling families will be the retribution. To those who slander, he says that being tongueless and having cankerous mouths will be the retribution. To the hateful, he says that being ugly and crippled will be the retribution. To the stingy, he says that not getting what they seek will be the retribution. So gluttons, he says that hunger, thirst, and sicknesses of the throat will be the retribution. To hunters, he says that a frightening insanity that destroys one's life will be the retribution. To those who oppose their parents, he says that being killed in natural disasters will be the retribution. To arsonists who burn mountains and forests, he says that trying to take their own lives in the confusion of insanity will be the retribution. So cruel parents or step parents, he says that being flogged in future lives will be the retribution. So those who net and trap young animals, he says that being separated from one's own children will be the retribution. To those who slander the triple jewel, he says that being blind, deaf, or mute will be the retribution. To those who slight the Dharma and regard the teachings with arrogance, he says that remaining in the bad paths forever will be the retribution. To those who destroy or misuse possessions, of the eternally dwelling, he says that revolving in the house for hundreds of millions of ants will be the retribution. 
to those who define the pure conduct of others and bear false witness against members of the Sangha. He says that remaining in the animal realm forever will be the retribution. To those who scorned, burn, behead, men, or otherwise harm beings, he says that undergoing the very same suffering will be the retribution. To those who violate precepts and the regulations of pure eating, he says that being born as birds or beasts that must suffer from hunger and thirst will be the retribution. So those who make unprincipled and destructive use of things, he says that being unable to ever obtain what they seek will be the retribution. So the arrogant and haughty, he says that being servile and of low station will be the retribution. So those who is backbiting to cause discord among others, he says that being tongueless or having speech impediments will be the retribution. So those with different views, he says that being reborn in backward regions will be the retribution. The bad habits involving body, mouth, and mind karma that beings of Jambu Vipa perpetuate result in hundreds of thousands of retributions like those. I have only listed a few examples here. Since the varying karma created by beings of Jambu Vipa brings about different responses, a store bodhisattva uses hundreds of thousands of expedient means to teach and transform beings. Those beings must first undergo retribution such as those and then fall into the house, where they pass through Anso without being able to escape. You should therefore protect people and nations. Do not allow the accumulation of karma to confuse beings. Upon hearing that, the four heavenly kings wept in sorrow, placed their palms together, and withdrew. And part one of Sutra of the Past Vows of a Straw Bodhisattva. Om ha ha ha, 